Welcome to Stemmer's uh, Technology Forum. Thank you for attending the event today. Uh, my, my presentation is gonna go over different application techniques. I have six examples that I'd like to go over and show you uh, different ways and techniques for some challenging and some simple applications to help give you uh, contrast and benefits for what you're doing. Um, interesting, I've never presented on the stage before, so I feel extremely important. <laughs> But all kidding aside, Smart Vision Lights is located in Muskegon, Michigan. That's the city, the state. We're in the United States of America, and uh, everybody from Michigan has their own map. It's nice and easy. Uh, we're Muskegon, Muskegon, Michigan is located on the uh, coast of Lake Michigan on the west side of the state. Um, most of our products are all produced in Michigan, and most of our vendors are all located within an hour drive uh, of our facility. Uh, we were established in 2007. We have a mission, uh, and our, our company mission is to be an innovative leader in design, uh, manufacturing, and high quality LED illumination for high bright solutions. We also uh, take a lot of pride in keeping the cost down on our products. So smart cameras have, uh, and cameras in general, have come so far with technology, increased technology, and the pricing has always decreased. Uh, that's the trend. Now, lighting hasn't done that for years. So in 2007, when we established our company, that was our goal, was to follow some of those suits of camera manufacturers and uh, offer lower cost solutions with added features. And uh, uh, we have over 50 years of combined machine vision knowledge and experience between our two owners. They're two old guys in the vision that have come from distribution, sales. Um, uh, one of our owners was a nine years regional manager of DBT. And the other is a guy who's been in the industry, done uh, engineering applications, uh, also started a company, Spectrum Illumination, who does LED lighting, and our company. So I'm not sure if there's a single individual that I know of in the United States who developed more LED illumination solutions for our industry uh, than our design engineer. Um, one of the big unique points and the big, big feature of our products is that the LED driver is no longer a separate component. It's actually integrated inside of the light. Um, that's one benefit because once you buy the light, you have every component that you need to operate that light. Um, with the LED driver built in, uh, it gives you the option to run the light into continuous mode or run it into strobe mode. Now we do have some overdriven products which are extremely bright, which are strobe only lights, but the nice thing about the products that do strobe or run in continuous is you don't have to change <coughs> drivers to do so. You don't need to buy an extra expensive component uh, from companies like Gardasoft or uh, I know CCS and some other competitors offer their own drivers. But uh, if you just want to change from strobing to continuous, uh, you just reconfigure the wiring. Uh, you'll need an NPN or a PMP strobe trigger signal on hand to strobe the light. But if you want to run it in continuous, all you'll need is a 24 volt power supply. Uh, we have flexibility in offering customized solutions or custom modified products from our standard product line. Uh, we do quite a bit of custom work for customers if uh, something off the shelf doesn't work for your application. Uh, we also have very fast lead times. 98% um, of our standard products will ship within two to four business days after receiving order. Uh, and that's shipping from our facility. Uh, so that means customers in Europe, uh, from the time that you place an order, if we give that a day for us to receive it and wake up in the morning, uh, by the time it's processed and built, uh, you could probably have your product from the United States and anywhere from a week to a week and a half if we have it in stock or it is uh, something that we just have to build and have all the components in stock for. <clears throat> but we also offer the best warranty in the industry. Our LED illuminators actually offer a, a five-year limited warranty. Now that limited warranty covers us, uh, uh, now if somebody runs it over with a forklift or anything other unfortunate ridiculous things that can happen to LED illumination, uh, really it's manufacturing defect. So we, we offer that now, uh, ultraviolet arrays, since those LEDs have about 10% of the lifespan of visible wavelength and infrared, um, we only offer a two year limited warranty. So uh, ultraviolet has about a 10,000 hour uh, rate of lifespan, where the rest of the LEDs we utilize at 100,000 hours, which equals almost 11 years. Um, we also have an in-house test facility for CE and IEC 62471, and what that is, is it's a, uh, a system for rating similar to lasers, but LEDs have become so, so intense, they're not as dangerous as lasers, so a completely separate standard uh, was established to measure the intensity and the risk factors associated with LED 
Uh, we've tested all of our products in-house. In order to have a CE mark for LED illumination products, you have to have uh, IEC 62471 testing done and uh, results for that posted on your website or in your company documentation. Uh, now moving on to my first application, this application is an example of two different types of lighting. It's diffuse illumination and it's also an opposite color uh, invisible wavelength. So you can use wavelengths to your advantage and one way to use those is uh, looking at a color wheel. Um, if you have a, a green object and you'd like to turn that green object dark, you would use a red light. Um, so, so, but in the inverse, if you had a red object and you wanted to turn that red object dark, you would use green illumination or a green wavelength. Uh, and the opposite is true too. If you wanted to highlight red, a red light would help bring out the color of something that would be red. And uh, that would be the, the case for all uh, applications and colors. Really objects are what, really what uh, control the illumination or the reflection of the type of color that's going to come back to the camera. And that's very important. The most important thing in vision is contrast. And uh, this is, these are easy ways to achieve uh, desirable contrast changes. Um, this is actually a feasibility test done on a semiconductor application with a circuit board. Um, these are some of the, uh, this is a diagram of the application. This is one of my brick spotlights. It actually has a, uh, it produces a very diffuse type of light because it's slightly modified to do so. Um, these are some of the distances. We also used a red bandpass filter on this product. And the reason for it was we were looking for the presence or absence or skew of these pads. Now since the background of this board is actually a dark green color, we utilized a red light. So what that did was turn the entire background very dark and highlighted the pads. So it made an easy contrast to pass and fail missing or skewed pads. You'll notice that we've got uh, four pads missing on this side. They all filled. So it's a good way to maximize contrast. And uh, since we used a diffuse light source, we didn't have a lot of those really bad reflection issues like you could get off of metallic objects. This is actually a, an example of a homogeneous illumination. Um, we, we found that diffuse light sources are becoming more and more popular, especially these uh, diffuse light panels that we call them. They're essentially large ring lights. Just think of a backlight with a hole in the center for your camera to look through. Uh, that can give you many benefits. Now in this vision guided robotics application, this was actually a food container, a food storage container lid. Uh, this, this is a manufacturer in New Zealand. And uh, essentially they had two conveyors, one running with a lid, one running with multiple clips. Um, what they wanted to do was inspect and find the location and the orientation of the lid. And uh, they did that with a camera that was essentially mounted on the back side of that light they can't see. So it was a two camera system. And they also used a high resolution camera to look through the center of the light. Uh, now what they did with the first camera was check the orientation of the lid. And with the second camera, they looked for the location and orientation of the clips. Sent all that information back to the robot. The robot actually picked up the clip, placed the clip on the mounting tabs, and did it two times faster than uh, a human who wasn't tired or exhausted could do. And, and they had a steady production solution because of this application. Uh, now what the diffuse light did was each robot actually had its own set of two cameras and a, and a single diffuse a ring light panel. And what it did was gave very soft diffuse illumination, flooded the area very well, eliminated any reflection possibilities from that plastic lid. Uh, so, so that's the type of uh, advantages that diffuse light sources can give you. Uh, this application is uh, uh, what I like to call angular techniques, so utilizing lighting at different angles to achieve specific results. Um, this was actually for a, uh, a pill bottle, so a medication bottle application. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to look for this label. The problem was the challenges were that the label could be in color, um, the label could, uh, and, and that really gave a lot of challenges. So you couldn't put a, uh, an illuminator on axis and look at the label. Uh, they had a, a tolerance of one degree on this label, so they wanted to be very straight. The one way to do that and ensure that color wasn't going to be a challenge in the application was actually to use a dark field light. So they, they shot the light directly downward over the label, highlighted this top line, took their measurement on this top line, and essentially that angular technique of using just a central small bar light uh, over top of the uh, medication bottle eliminated some of those challenges of color, 
and they were able to essentially just inspect and highlight the top of the label with that small, uh, small adjustment. Um, uh, us being in the Detroit area, we're located in the Steve Mission. Detroit's about a three hour drive from us, uh, but a lot of our employees have uh, done business in Detroit plenty of times. We see a lot of automotive applications. Um, this was actually an automotive application where the customer wanted to inspect the presence or absence of the heater emblem, so that it was a heated mirror, and they also wanted to look at the serial number. Now in the United States, ever since I've been, I don't know, like, as far as I can remember, for some strange reason, the passenger side mirror always says, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, and, which I find hilarious because I think we all know that by now, we've been driving for so long, but they still put that on there. That's not on this mirror, but uh, that, that is another type of presence absence uh, thing that could be inspected through this type of application. Now the challenge with mirrors is, it's a mirror. Anytime you put anything directly over top of a mirror, you will see it in the mirror. So you'll not only be inspecting, you will, you will actually not be inspecting the mirror, you'll be inspecting the reflection in the mirror, so your camera system, or your light. So the challenge with that is, is uh, another angular technique, and this really epitomizes uh, really uh, doing everything you can to uh, utilize angles to your advantage. So the camera would be off the axis at a 45 degree angle, and two backlights were used in this application, one directly under it, and one directly on the side. So essentially this camera is seeing this backlight. So that's why there's no other types of reflections, this is one complete flat color. Uh, so essentially what they were looking for was not only these emblems, but they wanted to inspect this outer ring gasket. Oops, sorry about that. And in order to achieve desirable results, um, two backlights were used. This is an image of just backlight one being illuminated. You can see that you know, the, the heater emblem comes out okay, the, the serial uh, number is completely non-existent, and that's really not a very desirable image to inspect the gasket. Um, backlight number two, being illuminated, uh, did a really good job of pointing out the heater emblem, as well as the barcode. My image is, or uh, the serial number, and my image is small. I, uh, this this is, comes out much better than large. Uh, but uh, uh, essentially, that came out very well, and, and a lot of the reason for that was because um, this was actually shrouded on the top. So any light that was on the outside of this mirror reflected downward and, and gave good results for that. Um, now, gasket's still not very visible, so what we had to do for that application was uh, utilize both lights at the same time, so two images were taken. One, to get the best results for the emblems, and two, the best results for the gaskets. So with backlight number one and backlight number two illuminated, you were able to really see the gasket. It really jumped out, uh, very easy uh, and simple results uh, when angles are uh, soft. So a uh, very difficult application from the onset, but by utilizing angular techniques, you can actually make it uh, relatively simple. Um, this is actually my favorite uh, application of the presentation, uh, candy canes. And I'm not sure what the German term for that is, but they come around around Christmas time, people hang them on their trees. <clears throat> they used to just taste like peppermint, but now they taste like anything from cinnamon buns to chocolate to some other licorice. Regardless, uh, it's, this time, it's the time of season, they're starting to come out. Uh, in the U.S., we, uh, candy canes are very big. Uh, now, the challenges with this, this is an infrared lighting application. Infrared can be used uh, to create a couple different advantages. It does behave a little bit differently than uh, some visible wavelengths. Uh, the challenges of this application is the entire package was wrapped in a plastic cellophane, uh, which can be very reflective under the uh, improper lighting. Uh, and then each candy cane was wrapped in its own plastic housing or, or uh, wrapper. Um, so, so both of those things can be difficult uh, to overcome. Now what they were looking for was the presence or absence of all candy canes in the package, as well as the uh, proper placement of the label. Now the problem with this application was these candy canes and these multiple flavors can be any color. We're used to the red and whites, the peppermints, that's the only candy cane that you should have, in my opinion. But uh, regardless, uh, what we did was we used a linear light solution, which was infrared. We also used a band pass 850 filter, uh, used the light slightly off axis so it wouldn't shine directly back into the camera. So we did use a slight angular technique in this also. Um, what we did was uh, look for the presence of absence, and once you've utilized infrared lighting, it helped eliminate any of the reflections with the angular technique, and also infrared tends to uh, 
get very good advantages with plastics. Uh, infrared lighting can, can uh, penetrate those rather than be reflected by some of those plastics. Uh, so that was one big key to using infrared lighting for this. Uh, so you can see that it easily jumps out the presence or absence of all the candy canes and the labels. So you'll notice that we've got slot 8 that's missing. We've uh, failed that and we've also failed the label. So a uh, simple application, but it does give you some of the benefits of infrared lighting. It also eliminated all the color variances throughout the whole application, so color was no longer an obstacle. That's another benefit of infrared lighting. Um, this one's another infrared application. This one actually is for blueberries. It utilized two lights, a white light and an infrared light. There were two things that they wanted to do in this application. One was detect the ripeness of the berry uh, based on the color. So he utilized a color camera to do so. Uh, they were able to detect the, the, the ripeness of the blueberries, but they also had a problem with infestations of Japanese beetles, which no one wants in their blueberries. Uh, so, what, so through infrared lighting and adjusting the exposure rates, uh, the beetles actually absorbed all of the infrared light, so uh, they became dark. Uh, beetles contain no chlorophyll, uh, which is a chemical, and uh, uh, chlorophyll actually will take in IR and absorb it and convert it to chemical energy. Blueberries don't do that. Uh, they contain a small amount of chlorophyll. So after adjusting them with the ex uh, exposures, infrared <coughs> lighting, we essentially made the blueberries become invisible to the camera. The Japanese beetles stuck out. They were able to sort those and, and not package those for you to take home to your family. So uh, very, uh, very tricky application, but uh, uh, surprisingly good results. Um, this is actually a UV adhesive detection. Um, uh, UV applications can be a little bit tricky. Uh, they work a little bit different than visible wavelengths. Um, you're not essentially looking, like, we always recommend bandpass filters with UV. They, they can help immensely. Uh, uh, but uh, the problem with that can be that uh, ultraviolet applications, you're not essentially looking to filter out red. If you're using red light, you should use a red bandpass filter. UV is uh, much different. Uh, what will happen is these chemicals or some of these ultraviolet dyes or, or brighteners will actually emit blue, green, cyan, or purple wavelengths. So what you'll want to do is utilize the proper filter of what that object is emitting back to you. So in this case, we utilized a uh, BP470 bandpass filter, so it was a blue bandpass filter. <coughs> the adhesive uh, had an additive in here. And you can see we did monochrome inspection and we did color. Um, uh, there are many products available that utilize invisible uh, dyes, uh, such as packaging. These are uh, eye drops, and uh, um, to inspect that the label was on there properly, there was a UV ink used to print on there. So uh, um, what we've uh, what we found is that with with uh, ultraviolet applications, it's always best to think about what color is coming back to you. Uh, you can use your own eye to do that, and you shine with. Uh, with ultraviolet light, but keep in mind that your eye can't play tricks on you, and a, smart, and a camera has a much better eye than yours. So that will only get you so far. It's a good starting point, but make sure that you test with, uh, we always recommend that you have an assortment of bandpass filters uh, available for testing, and uh, certain applications can excite more with 365 or 395. If you're ever dealing with an application where there's an additive in that, app, in that uh, uh, substance to make it excite, or glow, or for us, uh, we, we always recommend contacting the manufacturer. Any manufacturer who, who does a lot of these dyes and is a good manufacturer that can give you the spec on that component, and that'll give you another good starting point for testing UV applications. Um, and the nice thing about UV is a lot of customers do believe that color cameras are required for ultraviolet applications. It can be a benefit, especially if there's variances uh, in that. But uh, through bandpass filtering and through uh, the proper illumination and using the, the, the most uh, accurate wavelength to excite that material, monochrome cameras can be uh, much less expensive solutions for UV also. And uh, that'll end my presentation. Thank you guys for attending.